Hi, I'm Rachel Thorne and I'm here at Brands Hatch where the Indy Circuit is playing host to the first round of the 2016 BMW Race Days Compact Cup. I'm going to hand you over to Andy for a roundup of this year's competitor lineup. As the new season dawns for the BMW Race Days Compact Cup, anticipation is high among all involved, ahead of what may be the most competitive year yet. One definite pre-season favourite is the reigning Scottish champion Stephen Daly. Well, last year I won the 16 out of 16 races in the Scottish BMW Compact Cup. We felt we needed a change so we've came down here and we've just stuck on pole at Brands Hatch so we're, at the minute we're, 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 we're looking sweet. Hot on his heels will be the 2008 British GT champion James Gornall, back for his second season in Compact Cup. It's good. We've only done two test days, so to get out with everybody at the same time was, was very, very nice. I would have preferred to have done a little bit better than that qualifying session, but we'll keep trying. Owen Hunter got one race win in 2015, and we'll be looking to add to that this year. Well, after a long winter of rebuilding the car, I'm hoping to go three better this year and um, go for the aim of the championship. Well, we've joined the Champions for all motorsport this season to uh, hopefully give me that edge that we didn't quite have last season. It involved rebuilding the car from scratch, pretty much, and uh, taking things out, putting it back together, and uh, it feels a lot better already. John Watt will also be hoping for more consistent top five finishes. Oh, absolutely, it's been a very, very long time coming, getting all the sponsors sorted, getting the car ready. We've had a few problems over winter, we've sorted all of them, we've come out. It's not my favourite circuit and I think I'm fourth in my group, so it's been, it's been absolutely fantastic. Well, these are just some of the drivers expected to be mixing it at the front in 2016, but with a hugely competitive grid and plenty of potential front runners, picking a race winner, let alone a champion, is near enough impossible. Well, such is the popularity of the series this year. The field has been split into three groups, groups A, B and C. Each group will race twice today, once against each other, so three races to enjoy, the first of which is just a few moments away. Here's how they line up for it then. Stephen Daly and Declan McDonnell make up the front row. Richard Miles and Sam Carrington Yates on row two. John Watt and Joe Wiggin are on the third row, whilst row four is James Nutbrown and Jim Benson. Row five for Owen Hunter and Neil Roach. Row six is Craig Jamieson and Dan Kirby. Well, here we go then. It's time for all of the talking to stop and the action to begin. The red lights are on. They go out now. We're away and racing. Great start from Declan McDonald. He'll snatch the lead up towards Paddock Hill Bend. His teammate Joe Wiggin, though, is slow away in the black and pink car. They're four abreast, but a contact there with Neil Roach. He gets sideways but saves it. That was lucky. Owen Hunter now goes up the inside of James Nut Brown once, twice, third time. Lucky, yes. Off goes Nut Brown. Big spin for James Nut Brown into the gravel trap. And that's his race pretty much over before it begins. The rest of the field make their way into the right-hander at Druids. There's Neil Roach, lost out a little bit after that contact with Wigan into Paddock Hill Bend. They make their way now down towards the tight left-hander at Graham Hill Bend, where there's a bit of contact there between John Watt and Dan Kirby. There's James Nutbrown rejoining after his spin with uh, the front bumper dragging loose. So that will require a visit to the pit lane. Leaders up at Clark Curve and Declan McDonald leaves the door wide open. Stephen Daly throws it up the inside. Great opportunistic driving. I don't think Stephen quite expected it to be made that easy for him. It's not over yet though. Wheel to wheel at the end of the first lap of the season. What a start to the year this has been. Richard Miles is in third place. We're on board with him now and we're going to give a little assist here to Stephen Daly into Paddock Hill Bend. Bit of bump drafting going on. Daly goes through into the lead and Richard says thank you very much I'll follow you through and take second place as well so from second to first to third for Declan McDonald in the first lap and now Richard Miles is going for the race lead look goes up the inside of Daly into Druid Stephen was nowhere near the apex perhaps because he saw that Richard was on his way charging up the inside line Stephen hangs tough around the outside that gives him the inside for Graham Hill Ben watch for the switch back here from Richard Miles can't quite do it Stephen Daly had that one covered and they head down the Cooper straight with Daly the lead and Miles in second and McDonald third we played the start here from on board with James Nutbrown. We're going to end up in the gravel here shortly. But how exactly does it happen? Well, there's the first tap, there's the second, and there's the one that did it. Oh, and then he had, clatters into the side of Dan Kirby as well. Dan was looking not to spin out himself. Nutbrown, though, into the gravel, select reverse, and carries on his way. So, across the start, finish line, and look at this. <laughs> Stephen Daly and Richard Miles side by side again. Miles tried to go the long way round into Paddock Hill Bend. Can't do it there. Now watch for another switch back here. No, Stephen's got that one covered too as they drop down the hill. Richard Miles is throwing everything he has at Stephen Daly here, but Stephen will not relinquish this race lead. He can't escape though, so this is a battle look set to run to the flag. And Declan McDonald in the black, yellow and pink car is not far back in third place either. Down into Graham Hill Bend. It's all about getting the exit out of here and down the Cooper Strait. 
further back. That is the black and yellow number 55 car of Paul Hinson. Started from the back, having broken down in qualifying. He's charging his way forward. Now, as Richard Miles goes for the lead on the inside of Stephen Daly at Surtees, that is a brave man who will make a move at Surtees. And it often ends up with a little bit of contact. And indeed, Richard sensed that, backed out of it. And so Stephen holds on to the lead. But for my money, Richard Miles is a little bit quicker at this stage of the race. He's took right into the slipstream now as they come down the pit straight. These cars are not the most aerodynamic, so they do punch quite a big hole in the air. We're going safety car now, though, unfortunately, because Simon Welch has gone off at uh, Clark Curb. We believe that was in avoidance of someone else's incident. But either way, the car is stranded, the safety car comes out, and the field punches up. Safety car is back in then. We're about to go back to racing conditions here. Green flag flies and Stephen Daly and Richard Miles immediately make a break at the front of the field. Up into Paddock Hill Bend they go and drop back down the other side. These two have really got away from a great uh, battle for third place there between Declan McDonnell and Jim Benson in the silver, orange and blue car who tries to go to the outside into Druids but there's nothing doing there. There's Dan Kirby a little bit further back down the order. Uh, race leaders down at Graham Hill Bend then Richard Miles again carries more speed out of the corner can Daly get across to defend this time oh there's just a chink of an opening Miles goes for it wheel to wheel in Surtees this time he sticks with it there's side by side through the corner they make a bit of contact wing mirrors go flying out over the grass for Stephen Daly holds the lead but now Miles throws it back on the inside into Clark Kerr fabulous racing and Richard Miles I think might just do this now what a sequence of corners that was. They're still wheel to wheel, but with the inside line for Paddock Hill Bend, Richard Miles might finally have found a way past race long leader Stephen Daly. And what a move it was to take the race lead later on the brakes on the inside line. And Richard Miles does go through as long as he makes the corner, which he does. He is your new race leader. Well, that was absolutely incredible. There were inches between them as they went into Clark Curve and Richard Miles darted from the outside to the inside, snatched the race lead away. Watch this. Miles gets to the inside. There's just about room. They make some contact. Armfuls of opposite lock, but not to turn. He goes straight back for it at the next corner. Goes up the inside. The other wing mirror gets uh, bashed inwards and through he goes. Well, meanwhile, David May has had a rotation down at Paddock Hill Bend. And you may notice the green car in the uh, gravel trap. That is uh, the reason for it. It's the number 72 car. That's David Ashforth, who went off and is beached in the gravel at Paddock Hill Bend. These are yellow flags at Paddock Hill Bend for the time being, but no need for the safety car. We're going to continue racing. And we watch Jim Benson there, who's uh, got the red and black machine behind him of John Watt to play with, and then also the pink and black machine of Joe Wigan, who had that poor start and started to work his way back through the order. Benson just runs a little bit wide there at the front of the field. Sam Carrington Yates in the white and blue car is next in line. Then this is a battle pack that includes Dan Kirby and the blue car of uh, Neil Roach there trying to uh, clamber around the outside of uh, Druids. That didn't quite work. Stephen Drury there gets into the side of Daniel Devereaux in the number 69 machine. But the race leader, Richard Miles, on the final lap of the race is approaching the final turn. He's built up quite a comfortable margin now over Stephen Daly. Stephen did his very best to fend off Richard in the early part of the race but that stunning move from Miles put him into the race lead and it's a lead that he has not relinquished out through Clark Curve they come and race number one of the season for the BMW Race Days Compact Cup goes to Richard Miles second place is Stephen Daly third place a somewhat distant third in the end for Declan McDonald fourth is going to be Benson and side by side for fifth as Joe Wiggin pips John Watt right on the line so Joe Wiggin gets himself into the top five on the exit of the final corner essentially and uh, pips John Watt by just uh, a few one thousandths of a second. So it's Miles from Daly, McDonald, Benson and Wigg in the top five, John Watt sixth, Sam Carrington Yates seventh, Craig Jameson eighth, Giles Dawson ninth and Dan Kirby tenth. Stephen Daly had the fastest lap, Neil Roach was eleventh, then Nick DeJesus, David Whitmore, Darren Ball, Paul Hinson rounds out the top fifteen. Further back, we unfortunately lost Owen Hunter, David Ashforth, Mark Morton, Simon Welch, Stephen Drury, Jack Drury, and Ranjan Track Rabati from that first race. We went through qualifying. I know I had good pace. Um, I was confident I had the pace. Unfortunately, I went a millimetre over the track limit, so my lap time got taken. But um, going to the race, I already said before I was going to win it. So um, Stephen fought me hard. He fought me really hard. He wasn't giving up nothing. I knew I could tell I had the pace on him because um, I was keeping up with him. Um, I was trying to kind of just bump him along as we were going to try and make a gap to Declan. Um, it just got to the point that I knew if I could get in front, I could just get that lead. But he fought me so hard for it in the end, I had to just get through there. Well, as the marshals clear up some of the debris left after the first race, don't miss race two. Should be another cracker. Well, it's all go 
down here in the garages as the drivers and teams prepare for race two, that's groups C and B. So over to you Andy for a rundown on that grid. Well, let's take a look at how they line up for this second race then. It's Declan McDonnell and Ben Pearson on row one. Sam Carrington Yates and James Gornall row two. Joe Wigan and Ian Jones on the third row. Row four is Jim Benson with Ari Ross alongside. Neil Roach and Mark Skeet make up row five with Dan Kirby and David Drinkwater on the sixth row. Watching for the lights then, the revs rise, a bit of creeping from a few drivers, but away we go, and it's a good start from pole position there for Declan McDonald, bit of a slow start from Sam Carrington Yates in the white car there, he gets swamped on the run towards Paddock Hill Bend, and Joe Wigan, who can't buy a good start, gets held up behind him as well, so they both tumble down the order, but the race leaders make their way down the dip, and it is going to be McDonald leading the way, Pearson is there in second place, James Gornall is in third place, and then behind them it is uh, Ian Jones by Luxford in fourth, then Mark Skeets and Jim Benson the first side-by-side -side battle for fifth with Skeets in the yellow car going right the way around the outside Deeves in the inside for Graham Hillbend and he does go through David Drinkwater there in the red machine runs out wide good battling going on behind as well number 75 is Thomas Langford gaining a place but up towards Clark Curve for the first time we arrive and there is Ian Jones in the number 58 car started sixth already up into the fourth place then having had a very very strong start on the outside of the third row he's chasing off after the leading three already so the top four breaking away then it's McDonnell leading the way Ben Pearson second there is James Cornell who was runner-up in the championship last year himself several race wins but really wants to uh, challenge for the title again this season Drop down the hill, back up towards Druids. No one's really close enough in this lead group, I don't think, to make a move on the brakes into the hairpin. But I would say that McDonnell, who initially looked to be pulling away from Ben Pearson, is now being reeled in again, I think. And Ben is uh, starting to go after him. Further back, Joe Wiggin elbows uh, Neil Roach out onto the grass coming through Druids. Where did Roach rejoin? The answer is several places further back because Harry Ross and Matt Smith have gone through. And now David Drinkwater in the red number 77 goes right around the outside of him. Good opportunistic driving that from David. Right, leads up towards Clark Kerr for the second time. The door's left open from McDonnell and up the inside goes Ben Pearson. Two wheels on the grass, looking for the race leads. He's done enough now to prize the door open. The answer is no. McDonnell hangs on. Pearson still in second place. It's side by side for third though, as Ian Jones continues this remarkable start to the race, already into fourth, and now he's going for a podium place at the expense of James Gornall. Gornall's getting hung out to dry here in the white and orange car. Through on the inside goes Ian Jones, and he gets himself into a provisional podium position down the hill then behind the battle of the fifth is still raging between Mark Skeets and Jim Benson and then behind them that looks as though Dan Kirby making some ground Benson goes to the inside of Skeets through Drews but can't do it it is Dan Kirby gets up the inside of Joe Wiggin who again finds himself out over the curbs and the grass and Sam Carrington Yates in the white and blue car could benefit from this wheel to wheel in front of him into Graham Hill Ben then Wiggin on the inside with Kirby on the outside they both touch slightly and end up on the grass and as I suggested may happen Sam Carrington Yates benefits and so too does former drifter Ari Ross who throws his way back up the inside of uh, Dan Kirby as well so a few places lost for Dan there, just in front of them though. Fifth place is still being head by the yellow and grey car of Mark Skeets. Jim Benson looks racy here and you can see the leading four escaping up the road. Wants to get past them as quickly as possible. And Kirby now has David Drinkwater to play with. And then Matt Smith in the number four machine in behind too. Novice Cross on the back of his car suggesting he's relatively new to racing and something's happened there for fifth because Joe Wigan has suddenly shot through into fifth place Jim Benson goes sixth and Mark Skeets all the way down to seventh maybe eighth soon because uh, Neil Roach goes around the outside of him through Druids if he hangs tough it'll give him the inside for Graham Hillbend that's exactly what he is going to do and Neil Roach will go through so three places lost there for Mark Skeets maybe another one as well as off at Druids has gone car number 11 Simon Walker Hansel and he's tangled with the luckless Paul Hinton after breaking down in qualifying and a great fight back in race one. Unfortunately, race two has come to a crunching end up at Druids. So, cars back across to the start finish line, then towards the head of the field. It's McDonnell leading the way, but Ben Pearson, look, has dropped down the order. Ben Pearson has dropped down to seventh place that time around, perhaps, we believe, with some sort of intermittent uh, mechanical issue. This means that this is now the fight for second place on the final lap of the race, and it is, uh, sorry, for third place, Joe Wigan, who goes up the inside and snatches third away from James Gornall. Neil Roach now follows through as well, and Gornall ends up out on the grass. Sam Carrington Yates might take advantage. He's not quite close enough into Graham Hill Bend, so all change again then third place now Joe Wigan and fourth place is Neil Roach they're all chasing uh, still Declan McDonald and Ian Jones who are further up the road and with only a couple of corners to go this may well be the way they all finish can Carrington Yates have a go up the inside into Clark Curve not quite close enough so Gornall should hold on to fifth but he started the last lap in third he won't be best pleased 
out to see the chequered flag though comes Declan McDonnell. He's been a good day's work so far for Declan. He wins race two. Second goes to Ian Jones. Third is Joe Wiggin. Fourth place Neil Roach. Fifth just about is Jiggy James Gornall. And then sixth place for Sam Carrington Yates. Down in seventh place in the end for Ben Pearson. He won't be happy with that one. Eighth is Jim Benson. Ninth Mark Skeets. And tenth place for Ari Ross. He really had to fight his way through the field as well in that one, didn't he? Plenty of great dice throughout the field, but it is the Mac Attack car of Declan McDonald that wins the race, and with Joe Wiggin, his teammates, on the podium too, that is a pretty good day's work for them as well. So McDonald from Jones, Wiggin, Roach and Gornall the top five, Carrington Yates is sixth, then Pearson seventh, then Benson, Skeets and Ross. Outside the top ten, it's Charles Dawson, Nick DeJesus, Matt Smith, Dan Kirby, and David Drinkwater rounds out the top 15. Nick Hawes, Simon Walker, Hansel and Paul Hinson all failed to finish. The fastest lap goes to Joe Wiggin. I just got an amazing start and uh, Ben and I had agreed that we'd work together for the first five laps and then we'd let warfare commence and it, he was right on me for all of that time um, and then Ian joined the party and that just distracted Ben enough for me to make the exit and from that point onwards I got a couple of seconds gap I think and I was just controlling it on the tyres to be, to, to be honest and looking after the car I was watching Ian was quicker in some places and I knew I was quicker in others so I was doing that and it's great to have Joe my, uh, my, my son on the podium as well so that's absolutely amazing. Amazing. Well, we've had two spectacularly exciting races so far today from the BMW Race Days Compact Cup. This is how they line up for the third. It's Ben Pearson and Stephen Daly on the front row, James Gordon and Richard Miles row two with Ian Jones and John Watt on the third row of the grid. Row four, Ferrari Ross and James Nup Brown. Row five, Mark Skeets and Owen Hunter. And the sixth row, David Drinkwater and Craig Jameson. So Pearson and Daly on the front row of the grid. James Gornall third will be looking for redemption after race one. And away we go up towards Paddock Hill Bend. Pretty even start this time for both front row men. Harry Ross is the slow starter there in the black and gold car. They're five abreast up towards Paddock Hill Bend. Somehow they all survive. But look at this, it's wheel to wheel for the race lead then between Ben Pearson on the inside and Stephen Daly on the outside. And Richard Miles again providing some great on board footage. Launches to the inside of Stephen into Druids for the first time. So it's going to be potentially the two blue cars out at the head of the field here. Pearson has the lead. Second place is still just about miles, but Daly fights back into Graham Hill Bend. And at Graham Hill Bend, Ben Pearson misses the apex, runs wide onto the grass. And as Daly and Miles get side by side, they all converge down the Cooper straight. They make contact and they're still all there. And somehow Stephen. And Daly comes out of that with the race lead. That was so, so busy. Very close quarter stuff. Now at the inside goes Ben Pearson to try and retake second place from Richard Miles. Richard finds himself hung out on the dirty side of the road through Clark Curve. They're still side by side, though. We can just about see to the right-hand side of the screen there that uh, Ben Pearson is fully alongside as they come across to complete the first lap. But look, it's already allowing Stephen Daly to build up just a little bit of a margin here. Side by side into Paddock Hill Ben. This is brave stuff between Ben Pearson and Richard Miles. And Ben on the inside line should prevail. Clambers all over the curb there. Get car gets very out of shape. And that uh, forces Richard to really let him go. And now watch for James Gordon in the white and orange number 18 car to buy into all of this as well. Miles is still trying to hang on around the outside. But that won't work. On ball with Richard here on the first lap. And you can see up in front, Ben Pearson just slithers out wide. And then Miles gets a better run than uh, Daly does out of the corner. Goes for the gap in the middle. Big contact on both sides. Amazingly, they all seem to survive unscathed. And then uh, Stephen Daly takes the race lead. The battle uh, shaping up here between David Drinkwater in the uh, red car. And then uh, just in behind him is John Watt. And in behind the pair of them, James Nutbrand, who, remember, uh, didn't finish the first race after that spin at Paddock Hill Bend. But because uh, the grid for this race was set by qualifying rather than uh, results from early races, James is right back in the mix again inside the top ten in this third race. As there for second place was a change. And that looked as though Richard Miles uh, had found a way back ahead of Ben Pearson as they went into Surtees corner that time around. We'll double chat that next time we see them. John Watt gets very, very sideways into Clark Curve. And, well, he goes through the gravel trap, but he did save the car from spinning, which I think was the main thing. Drops himself outside the top ten, though. On board with Richard Miles, and this is how he did it. He forced Pearson to defend into Graham Hill Bend. And really clever driving that, because Pearson was therefore slower off the corner. And look at the waving going on there. It's not a rude gesture. It's Richard Miles trying to signal to Ben that if we work together, we might be able to catch the race leader. Look at this going on, three abreast down the back straight between the uh, number 11 car of Simon Walker Hansel in the middle is John Watt and up the inside of the pair of them goes Matt Smith. He very nearly gained two places in one there, Watt fights back though through Surtees and now Walker Hansel fights back at Clark Curve. Well, what a topsy-turvy half a lap that was for uh, Matt Smith. He gained two and now he's lost two again through Clark Curve. I think Walker Hansel should be able to retake the place here. They're leaning on each other slightly as they come through clearways this time around. And they will be side by side when they arrive at Paddock Hill Bend. But on the inside line, I think 
that um, Walker Hansel should be able to retake the place. Yes, he can. Another man with a novice cross on the back of the car. They give each other racing room. Matt Smith now perhaps will try to fight back on the run towards Druids. Goes to the outside line, goes right around the outside at Druids. Now, this works if you hang tough on the exit and get the inside for Graham Hill Bend. He's trying to. Oh, they make a bit of contact as they drop down the hill. And uh, Simon Walker Hansel was looking not to spin there rejoins in front and Matt Smith just settles in behind. They both live to fight another day then. Up towards Surtees, there go Mark Skeets and uh, then John Watt in the red and black car. His battle's still raging though between Walker Hansel and Matt Smith. Is Smith going to have a go at the inside? No, not into Clark Curve. Richard Miles, meanwhile, makes his way up towards Druids. Now, he has been catching the race leader Stephen Daly. He's taking a couple of tenths a lap slow progress but he is getting there David Drinkwater meanwhile is still battling away with uh, James Nutbrown as they make their way out through the uh, right hander at Druids down towards the left hander at the bottom of the hill at uh, Graham Hill Bend that's Craig Jamieson in the number eight car the black and green car also joining in the film through Paddock Hill Bend and up towards Druid. This battle's still going on and James Gornall really wants to try and find a way past Ben Pearson if he can. There's a back marker ahead as well which could come into play. Down into the left-hander at Graham Hill Bend. That's Graham Kersley in front of them. And Graham gets sideways and spins. Oh, which way do they go? Gornall goes to the inside, to the outside for Pearson. And it's the inside that works out nicely for James Gornall. Goes through into third place. Pearson will bounce his way back onto the track in fourth. And then looks as though uh, that's going to be in... Uh, Ian uh, Jones, isn't it, that gains places out of all of that too. He finds a way uh, past uh, Owen Hunter, so plenty of shuffling going on there. At the front of the field, Stephen Daly has been caught by Richard Miles, but it's all too little too late because the checkered flag is out. Stephen Daly wins at Brands Hatch. Second place goes to Richard Miles. Third place and on the podium in race two for James Gornall. Ben Pearson fourth, Ian Jones is fifth, James McBrown is sixth. Craig Jamieson, David Drinkwater, Darren Ball and Owen Hunter will round out the top ten. But Stephen Daly, well, he won every single round of the 2015 Scottish Compact Cup. And he's come over down into the uh, into England to fight in this championship. He's finding it very tough going, but does get a race win from Miles Gornall, Pearson and Jones in the top five. Nook Brown, Jamieson, Drinkwater, Ball and Hunter round out the top ten. Ari Ross, Thomas Langford, John Watt, Matt Smith and Simon Walker Hansel make up your top 15. The fastest lap of the race went to Richard Miles on the ninth lap of the race as he was trying to chase down the leader Stephen Daly, but he couldn't quite get there. Uh, at Graham Hill Bend, uh, one of the competitors just ran a little bit wide. There was a bit of side-by-side uh, -side action between me and Richard and James, and it just all went from there. Um, managed to get a little bit of a gap. Um, everyone else was defending, so I was quite fortunate with that race. Um, Richard ca caught me throughout the whole race. It just came down to the last lap. The checker flag was out. Took the win. So after an action-packed first weekend of the year, it's Richard Miles and Stephen Daly who share the championship lead. Declan McDonnell, Ian Jones and Joe Wigan round out the top five, but at this early stage of the year, it's all very, very tight. Well, that's a wrap. What a stunning weekend we've had here at Brands Hatch for the BMW Race Day Compact Cup. First round of the 2016 season. The weather's been fantastic and the driver battle's phenomenal. Tune in next month for the action from Rockingham.